All right, welcome back. So we talked about code coverage before, and now we're going to talk about data coverage. Now, remember that every time you add additional test cases, um, the keyword is additional, right? Because your previous test cases already have covered a subset, whatever your next criteria is, because there's an overlap, right? So in order to test, um, uh, lines of code, we are also testing some data. When we're testing data, we are obviously doing lines of code as well, because while we're choosing test cases based on data, we actually still executing lines of code, right? And so forth. So that's why the if you already have created your test cases for code coverage, you are adding additional test cases for data coverage. So then we want to look at every uh, method and every constructor to see if there's any additional test cases we need to have in order to have a reasonable data coverage. So our constructor with no parameters, well, there's no parameters, right? And that's what data is for math methods. Most of the time is the inputs, the parameters. Um, and also data can be um, within the function we call, we're getting data from someplace else, like a, um, a server database, right? Which in this case, we don't have any. Um, or we creating some data within the method, in which case you would, we would want to look at those as well. But for something relatively simple like this, we're basically looking at our parameters, right? So let's look at the second constructor and see if we have covered all the reasonable data values for these, these uh, parameters. Um, so for what it's doing here, which again is straightforward, um, we want to make sure that that we cover every num value uh, for error messages and also a valid one. So we already had a test case where it was valid, right? And it got here for each of those. So that's already covered. And we already had one test case, which we gave it a negative value. So we already covered this part, right? We have already covered num less than zero. Um, so now we want to concentrate what other things we can have in terms of values, right? Um, well, so we we um, we want to test right on the other range, right? So we know it, it has to be greater than zero, um, but it also has to be less than five, right? So if num is greater than five, we want to throw an exception. So one of the test cases is going to be passing it a value that's greater than five, right? Or a five if we want to check the boundary. Uh, a lot of times you want to do both, right? You want to check the boundary, which is five, and also something greater than five. Um, and then we, when we look at documentation again, it has to be greater than zero. Well, anytime, again, you have a boundary condition, so you want to check for zero. So we're going to have two test cases. We're going to have one for zero and one for five, right? And both of them are supposed to throw an exception, right? So those are first two data um, test cases that we didn't have before. So let's look, look at string. Well, for string, right, we already did one uh, test cases where we passed it the null, right? So now we also want to test for the empty value because our, um, the empty string value, because our documentation says it cannot be null and it cannot be empty string, right? So it cannot be either of those cases. And if it is, it's supposed to throw an exception. So we want to have a, another test case that passes it the empty string and we expect it to have a exception, right? It's supposed to have, where is it? Illegal argument exception. And it's supposed to have this message, right? These messages. So let, what else we need data? So those, those would be for this straightforward code, this would be the kind of thing we would want. Um, and usually for integers, you want to test negatives, um, the boundary conditions, whatever the value is allowed to be. So you want it less than the boundary, greater than boundary, the limits, right? The two limits, um, maybe some big number. So um, you could in theory, have the smallest uh, int number, the biggest uh, the biggest max number. For something this straightforward, you wouldn't normally do that. But if 
if there was some reason in terms of what this uh, value can store that you want to make sure it can store and do something with very small or very large numbers you would do that as well um, and you always for integer you always want to test zero right so negative zero positive the limits and boundaries whatever the numbers allowed to have uh, are the typical for strings the typicals are empty and null string uh, a string of one character many characters and then depending what it's storing right if it was to store only 10 characters then you would check that it's what happens when it's um that it's doing what it's supposed to when it's less than 10 characters when it's uh, exactly 10 characters when it's greater than 10 characters right so anytime you have some requirement you always want to test the exact requirement and something that that's um, below or above in a sense right in terms of uh, what the requirement says and then over here uh, okay we don't have a parameter but we have this loop right so um, whenever you have a loop even though that it's not strictly um, data I guess um, even though it's I guess in included data you, you do want to test that um, anytime you have a loop, that the loop executes, um, or you want a test main statement that executes the loop when, when it actually loops. And then you want to have a test cases where it never executes the loop. And most of the time you do want to have where it executes the loop once, versus it exu executes it many times, right? So uh, a lot of times you will wanna have a value that makes it go one, that never goes through, goes once, and then goes a couple times. So, you know, a few times, whatever it might be. Now, if there was a max number of times it's supposed to go through loop, like there's a limit, then you would also test that. So we already tested where it goes inside the loop a few times. So a good additional test case would be that it never goes inside the loop, right? So we want we would want to have a value for the um, attribute int that's already less than or equal zero, right? And we can look at how you would do that. Um, now the other thing about this particular method is um, that we are using the attribute int and the um, attribute string to do something. So sometimes when you do that, you actually want to create a test case um, that checks that while we're using these values, that we are not breaking them in any way, right? That we are not breaking them. And in fact, when I wrote this code, this is how I wrote it. And then when I was thinking about test cases, I realized myself, I said, wait a second, look what I'm doing. I actually took the attribute value and I changed it by running the loop, which what that means is that at the end of this loop, my attribute end is going to be zero. Well, I actually didn't mean to do that, right? I didn't mean to do that because now I, I've changed a value that I, it didn't say nothing about me changing it. All I was supposed to do was use these values to, to come up with the string, right? So I actually destroyed the value of the attribute, right? Well, when I wrote my initial test cases, unit test cases, I actually didn't have a test case to check for that. I didn't think about it. It's only when I realized I had this defect, right? What I should have done was create a variable that gets the value of this attribute and then use the variable within the loop such that I don't destroy the attribute value in the first place, right? Only when I realized I had this defect that I wrote the unit test case. And that's very common, right? Some test cases you write because you're going through looking what inputs I need, what statements I need to, uh, what requirements I need to test, what statements I need to test. And, and your test case actually will fail and you say, oh, I have a defect, right? But sometimes you might realize you have a defect and then write a test case for it because again, the test cases will be used for regression in the future. So since I made that mistake in the first place, well, chances are maybe someone else could make a similar mistake and therefore you want to have a test case for your regression, All right? So now let's look at the implementation of the test cases. <clears throat> 